Welcome to today's 15 minute overview of TradeShift's AP automation and e-invoicing solutions. We really appreciate you being here and hope you find this session useful. And today we want to look at some of the great capabilities we can deliver to finance teams and AP teams. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat or in the Q&A. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Now we have a wide range of features um, that we deliver to our customers and unfortunately too much that we can present today but we do have some key focus areas of process transformation. And this includes supplier onboarding, invoice capture, data extraction and validation, and approval workflows. The other items, compliance and auditing and real-time insights we'll cover in other sessions. And there's also a wealth of information on our website for you to take a look at. So without further ado, let's take a look. Firstly, we're gonna take a look at step one, supplier onboarding. TradeShift has invested a lot of time and effort into this aspect with 15 years of experience, and we know it's a really difficult thing to do. As long as your business is in operation, there'll always be new suppliers to onboard. Well, our first invoice onboarding capability gets the attention of suppliers to join our network right at the point when they're most interested in engaging with you, and that's when they've submitted an invoice for the first time. Here we are on the TradeShift platform as a member of the AP team, and leading up to this, let's imagine a supplier has sent a PDF invoice attached to an email. If it's the very first invoice from the supplier, Relationship Manager allows us to associate the PDF with the right supplier on the network or indeed in your ERP system. Embedded artificial intelligence suggests examples of what's captured on the document. And now you can search for companies that are already known to you or set up in your ERP. However, big global supplier in this case cannot be found so we can initiate a supplier onboarding process to invite that supplier right here from within the system. On the right hand side, we'll see a set of data points that were extracted from the PDF. And we can also drill down into the PDF image itself that was attached to the email. Now relationship manager looks for what we call fingerprints. And in the same way that fingerprints on our hand uniquely identify each and every one of us, every document also has unique identifiers or fingerprints. Here we can identify those data points that are uniquely associate this vendor record with the PDF. Now I'm gonna use the right hand panel to search for the supplier's name, big global supplier. So let's go ahead and select this one. And we can use as few as one data point, but as many as we would like to uniquely uh, identify this vendor from any future invoices. And that could be not just the vendor name, but also that registration ID or address, for example. Now with this one-time activity, all invoices coming from this supplier will be appropriately tied to the vendor record in your ERP moving forward. And this process only has to happen the first time that you receive an invoice from a supplier, because in the future, we'll drive straight through processing without the need of manual association. The next part of our onboarding process covers the data validation stage where users can easily interact with documents once they've been accepted into the platform. As you can see on the left hand side, all of the information has already been extracted from this PDF document and on the right we can see the actual invoice itself. Now if there are no data errors, this step is optional and it'll go straight through to the workflow. However, if we do have errors or issues with completeness, they can be clearly highlighted here for an operator to see. And in this case, it needs to find a document number. Now I can point and click on where the information can be found on the image on the right and it's automatically pulled into the right cell on the left without having to do any typing. However, I can update and enrich any field as I see fit. Importantly, we can also use this tool to engage with your suppliers and send the invoice back to them to get help. And this serves two purposes. Firstly, to get the suppliers onboarded as quickly as possible and secondly, to engage them in resolving invoice issues. In stage two of our process, we're logged in and viewing the system through the eyes of a supplier as they search for a purchase order in the system in order to flip that into a compliant invoice. Here, a supplier search for a PO that's been received across our network, but POs can be generated from within TradeShift or that you can continue to generate POs from your native procurement systems and simply integrate them with TradeShift for distribution purposes and also for invoice matching. After opening the document, the supplier can scroll down to view all of the information and they can accept this document, which would notify you. And also there's a create invoice button here at the top right of the screen to put all of this rich PO information into a new invoice. 
PO data is already automatically copied across into the invoice and the only remaining fields that need to be filled are highlighted as needed. The flip capability is great for small businesses and provides the best opportunity for data accuracy because the information is pre-populated from your orders. Tradeshift can check completeness using our business firewall and this is the system's ability uh, to create rules that mandate certain pieces of information must exist on your invoices before they're allowed to be sent to you. In this example, I've required a personal reference to be on every invoice. And when I clear this field, it's going to uh, show an exception because we've specified that has been required for this particular supplier. But personal reference is just an example. It could be PO number, uh, it could be shipment number, uh, whatever you specify as being mandatory. The user interface is only one way of invoice submission, however, and we recognize that many large suppliers with big volumes need integrated ways of sending you invoices. However, one of the obstacles to achieving this is the effort. TradeShift, however, includes a self-service integration platform as a service to rapidly achieve those outcomes. There are many different digital formats in circulation today, like UBL, Edifact, uh, Tradacoms, XML, and many more but we have you covered. Here we can see how easy it is to create a transformation of any data type. We allow a systems integrator to map data from any source system to use the desired destination format by simply dragging and dropping between the corresponding fields. And this means that data transformation can be set up to include incoming invoices in any format and deliver that right to your ERP system. We can also manipulate that data using a function editor uh, if any of the translations need to change. Artificial intelligence is also included to suggest uh, translations that you might like to select from. So data manip manipulation is therefore really easy with, with TradeShift. Using EDI is typically an expensive consultation effort with a services team, but all of this is self-service, so it could easily be, um, easily be managed by your own IT teams to drive a much lower total cost of ownership for our customers. Moving on in the process to step three is data validation or exception handling. And we're going to take a look at how users are going to be able to interact with these exceptions and errors in the system. For this, our task manager is where all actionable items can be found. AP users can easily filter through these lists to make it easy to understand which document types or task types have been assigned to them. In this case, we can see a price exception by filtering on that particular exception to give us all of those exceptions assigned to my user. And at the top of the document, we can see the exception that's occurred. In the related documents area, we can see any associated documents like purchase order or goods receipt, anything that's matched to this invoice. And then we can show the linked lines where the exception has actually occurred. And in this case, the invoice has an amount of $348 billed. However, the purchase order has $300. There are multiple options available to my user at this stage and what I'd like to do next. And in this case, I'm going to open up the actions and reject this back to the supplier with a note. And this is the first example of TradeShift's collaboration functionality, where this note is sent alongside the rejected document back to the supplier, giving them the opportunity to create a new invoice with the appropriate amount, but also to collaborate with me right here for within the system to reach a much speedier resolution. Another common use case is for non-PO invoices. These are invoices that come into your system and don't have a purchase order. And these need to be booked against the right general ledger codes, which is effectively associate, associating the spend to the right uh, departments within your ERP system. Users can easily see what they're meant to do with this document, as well as see who will be needed for approval on the event horizon at the top. But here we're going to demonstrate how a user can code these line items. There are drop downs which are tightly associated with your ERP system to surface valid lists uh, for your operator to select from. Here we can see how I'm utilizing TradeShift's UI, giving your teams the ability to manually code these invoices as they come in. Therefore, there's no way of making any mistakes because the combinations are pulled directly from your source systems. Now we don't expect your AP clerks to manually code all invoices that come through and we've built artificial intelligence into the platform to support that. Uh, Ada is our AI layer 
which learns from any historical coding done manually by your teams and starts making suggestions based on confidence levels in a memory store. Here we can see a line that's sent to my user for coding, but this time Ada has made a suggestion and all this user has to do is check it uh, and then assign that to an approver if you're okay with what she's done. If changes need to be made, you can make an edit which Ada will learn from in the future and make better suggestions moving forward. Tolerances can also be stipulated on the AI confidence to account for customers who be more, may be more progressive or more risk averse. And all of this is controlled within a convenient automation dashboard where AP managers can configure anything related to automatic AI and those configuration thresholds. In my configuration, you can see that assisted coding is enabled and auto coding has been disabled, which means when invoices are received and coding, uh, coding added, it must be first checked by an AP user. We can also see some statistics of historical data and how AI is performing over time. Scrolling further down, you can see the accuracy of your human users and manual coding and the number of rejections that occur versus the accuracy taken by actions of artificial intelligence. Over time, on the blue line, which remains pretty consistent for my human users, but ADA errors are actually decreasing as it learns through machine learning. We can set these thresholds to give ADA a suggestion of how conservative or progressive we want her to be. Using the slider, we can get a visualization of how often ADA will make suggestions and how often those suggestions will pred be predicted to be true. And this graph illustrates a prediction of times ADA will be accurate in error or abstain from doing anything based on the thresholds that you set. And you have all this control right in the system without the need to leverage an IT team to get involved. So now let's change role for the final time today and demonstrate how approval flows can be handled within TradeShift, as well as how you can communicate with your teams collaboratively across the system. We're now looking through the eyes of an approver on TradeShift who may be your manager or supervisor or indeed someone in a customer approval hierarchy based on your needs. The hierarchies we set up can be dynamic, associated with different cost objects or spend limits based on the permissions that you set. We can also connect to external systems via APIs and make use of approval structures you might have set up already in other systems elsewhere. This user has decided that uh, they want to reach out to a colleague and again I'm using a conversation window that lives alongside each and every document, each invoice in TradeShift to add my chat. And we can also add users to this to flag for their attention or to ask them a question. My conversation lives alongside system alerts in chronological order. So you have complete history and audit trail for everything that's happened to this, uh, to this invoice. And the system also extends beyond the boundaries of, of your business. So you can include people in the chat who may be business partners, such as suppliers or indeed service providers. The system uses responsive design. So we can do exactly the same functions on a mobile phone or tablet device. And a remote user can leverage their phone to respond to any inquiries that met, they may have been sent. And this is typical for infrequent remote users. Anywhere that you have an internet or web browser, you can get access to TradeShift. As you can see here, my remote user is open up the task manager. They're able to look at the very same information that the originator was seeing. And we can scroll through the document, see exactly what needs to be done, and make any changes that might need to be made. The user can also open up that collaboration window and chat back to the originator in real time, which is what we're going to see here. My users do not need to go back and forth over email and confuse each document uh, with uh, other emails that they might have received because everyone is looking at the very same information, the same conversation, the same history against this invoice within TradeShift. And so there you have it, TradeShift's AP automation and e-invoicing solutions in 15 minutes. <music>